like Jacques had said, it's sort of like the democratization of criticism. There is no more one sort of godly voice that sort of descends from on high and says, I deem this place worthy or I deem this place you know, not worthy of your dollar. It's, there are a million people out there saying, hey, I've been to Thailand, I, I've eaten on the streets of Thailand, this Thai place in Queens now or in Chicago, it's great because they're doing the same kind of green papaya salad that I just had on my trip. And people are writing about it and then they're engaging each other. And so if things are so rapid now, how does that affect how you approach your next book or your next project or your next ballpark experience? Uh, because things are so rapid and they're, not, they're, not, they're happening so quickly. I'll take a quick stab at it. I, I think that, that there's, there's got to be a counter force. There's, there's always going to be the speed which is trying to grab onto the next trend and the next new thing. And, and you know, that, that's, been, that's been here since 1989. 1989, we were in this room. I remember Brendan Walsh talking about mesquite grilling at Arizona 206 in New York oh, yeah, City. Right. That was the thing back then. And then you had Alfred Portal talking about architectural food at Gotham Bar and Grill. That was the thing. And we're going to go through all of our things every single two years. You know, we're, apparently we're done with foam right now and nitrogen, <laughs> nitrogen cooked cotton candy and all the kinds of things people are experimenting with today. And, you know, God knows there will always be more of those. But the countervailing trend in our business, and I can't speak for Jacques' business, but the thing that's very slow is the fact that you still have human beings transacting with each other at a table. And the experience of whatever it is they're eating is really just there so that human beings can pull a cork together, enjoy clinking glasses and having a glass of wine and connecting on a human level. And if, God forbid, if we ever lose that part of it, which is the experience of the table as a place for people to be together, which is a slow, non-Twitterable experience, should be, mm -hmm. that, that would be a sad thing. Yeah, I, I, uh, I do. Uh uh, think uh, you're right there. I mean, for me, certainly, it's a question of being yourself. Uh, you cannot escape yourself anyway, so you might as well be yourself. In that sense, it doesn't mean that you don't close your, your mind to what's going on in the world and so forth. But certainly, at the turn, after Nouvelle Cuisine and fusion cooking and all that, so many restaurants try to you know, attach themselves to so many brands and doing a little bit of Tex-Mex, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then you destroy the restaurant. Uh, I remember years ago when Lutest was a great restaurant in New York, Andre Saltner, uh, people say the greatest French restaurant in New York. It may or may not have been. Saltner didn't even consider it as the greatest restaurant, uh, certainly in New York, but at least it has great identity. You sit there, that was the cooking of Saltner, and that's it. You like it, you don't like it. The point is not there, the point that the restaurant has really a very strong identity. And I believe that this is very important for a restaurant. So often when young chefs try to do a little bit of everything, then you lose who you are. And ultimately, you know, you have to go back to who you are and do what you think is right. And some people like it, some don't. You cannot please everybody anyway. But at least you stand for what you believe is right and what you should be doing.